then you have to go to another institution to get those requirements before you can pass the NCAA regulations. So make sure you're on the right path. I'm in an academic program. I'm not in a vocational program. If you're in vocational and you want to go to college to play football, you have to switch lanes. You have to be in an academic environment. So keep that in mind. The Professional Football Players Love Association, as uh, I mentioned, started 26 years ago. It became a mechanism or a support mechanism for mothers of professional football players. We support Who's the best? 
everybody fast, huh? Everybody run up on too. <laughs> hey man, look, I'm gonna tell y'all, man. Um, it's, it's great to be back here in Detroit, man. It's especially great to be back here in King. Uh, we didn't have all this when I was here, man. So you guys are a real, real fortunate. Um, I want to thank the coaches, thank the superintendent, thank the moms, everybody, man. Because uh, uh, it takes a village, man. So um, look around, man. Y'all got a lot of support, man. And uh, y'all have to look at, uh, you know, taking care of your grades. It's, it's your job. It's who you are. It's a part of your resume. So you got to take it serious. I, I tell my son all the time, man, like, you got to work hard, bro. Like, if you don't do no extra sprints after practice, and you probably don't do no extra work when you come home from school. Like, it's it's a correlation, man. You can't have books without balls. It's books, behavior, ball. Books, behavior, ball. Triple B. Y'all don't remember nothing else. Books, behavior, ball. I'm telling you. And everybody here ain't going to go to the NFL. Surprise. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, if it's, it's 858 schools, I believe, that, that have football, universities that have football. And it's probably like 120 people on each team, right? So uh, that that probably add up to like, I don't know, like 90-something thousand student athletes, right? It's only 32 teams. It's only like 1,600 players. Like what's gonna make you special? What's gonna make you stand out? You know what I'm saying? So. Um, take advantage of being here at Martin Luther King High School, man. We we had some dogs come through here. Like I, Wendell went, went here. I went here. Sauce Gardner. Like the, the list goes on and on and on. Man. So y'all, y'all have some good company, man. Y'all got great coaches. Uh, I've been watching y'all live stream uh, at, the, at the championship games and stuff like that, man. Y'all been making me proud. And uh, y'all got to keep grinding, man. Stay in them books. Stay in them books. Like Ms. Johnson said, make them say your name. You know, um, when you're done playing football, and it's, it's going to come to an end, now you got all that work that you put in with your books and stuff like that, and studying all that, now you got to take that and go into this real world. You know, pretty soon, like, you know, you're going to have a family, and your kid going to look up to you, and you got to have a foundation. In order to build a house, you got you to start from the ground up. And that's what y'all doing right now. You gotta build your brand. It's, it's, it's hard to get scholarships these days. Now you got the transfer board, you got NILs and all this stuff, man. You got a lot of distractions, man. So y'all gotta stay focused, man. I love y'all, man. Y'all, y'all crusaders, man. It, it means something, bro. Like, we out here. <laughs> we out here. I remember, I couldn't like, there was nobody who went to King that I was like, oh man, my man played in the league, whatever, like, oh this. There's so many of us right now, bro. So many of us, man. And y'all got a lot of uh, opportunity in front of y'all. Y'all got the sound mind, sound body from my teammate, Kirk Blackwell. Like, y'all can tap in on that. And um, you, you know, you got so many resources, man. And uh, I'm proud of y'all, man. And uh, you know, keep, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of y'all, man. I, I don't think y'all know how much I, like, cause I be in, Illinois, and I'm looking at a live stream of y'all games, and I'm just proud, man. I'm, I'm there, I'm screaming. I'm, I feel like I'm, a, I'm still a part of the team, which I am. But you know, I'm just, I'm just in Illinois, and I'm just, I'm, I'm so proud, man. And y'all gotta keep it up, man. But y'all gotta stay in these books, man, because it's a lot of distractions out here, man. Uh, when I was here, I didn't even, I didn't want to play football. My mom made me play. We used to play basketball in my neighborhood. I thought I was gonna be like a Big Michael Jordan, you know what I'm saying? But my mom was like, "You big, you athletic, you got like a." I had like a little temper, so she was like, "You need to play some football." And I was like, "No, nah, I play basketball. I hoop. I be crossing dudes up, and all this stuff." At least in my head, that's what I thought. But my mom dropped me off here on the track and said, "Go introduce yourself to that coach right there." I didn't know it was a bunch of coaches up there. I didn't know what she was talking about. I had on some jean shorts and like some, I don't know, some Air Force Ones and like a tank top or something like that. My mom's like, get out, get out, don't introduce yourself to that coach. The same woman who told y'all to stand up and say hello, that same woman was like, get out my car and go introduce yourself to that coach right there. 
And uh, I was like, which coach? And then uh, by the time I turned around, she was gone. So I was like, man, I went up and took myself. He told me to go run on the track. Next thing you know, I was I was hooked. I, I, I didn't want to play football, because I was like, man, it's, it's four hours. Like, you either gonna run or you're gonna pass. Like, I don't want to see that. I'm gonna see somebody get crossed up. I'm gonna see somebody get dumped on, you know? But um, I'm so glad my mom, you know, told me to go out there and play some ball. And I've been playing football for 18 years every day. You know, played four here, five at Penn State, we nine at the NFL. Make sure so y'all y'all really listening to y'all parents, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. I tell the same thing to my son, man. You just gotta work, man, and understand that we know what we're talking about, man. Like, I've been there, I've been to the highest level. I've been where you're trying to, where you're dreaming to get. I've already been and retired. So listen to your parents, man, listen to your coaches. I know y'all probably think like, you know, they, they, they can't relate because they don't have Snapchat and they don't have <laughs> all this other stuff, man. But listen to your parents, man, and listen to your support system, man. And like Ms. Johnson said, man, make sure they call your name, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, I love y'all. Let's go in the States.
Jefferson from, um, he played with the Baltimore Ravens, right? And um, he's now um, a uh, journalist at Minnesota because he went to the Minnesota Golden Gophers, right? Minnesota Vikings. He's the co banker for the Minnesota Vikings right now. And he is a uh, Martin Luther King alumni. So the next person that I have coming up to speak to you is Mr. Joseph Hines.
and shoot free throws and make free throws in your mind for a half hour every day. The third group, he told them, I don't want you doing anything. Don't touch a basketball. I'll shoot a free throw over the next 30 days. After the 30 days, he brought the entire group back, had them shoot the same amount of free throws that they did on day one. He sat in each individual line. Then what he found is that group one, one who he had to come in and shoot free throws, they improved that 24%. The second group, who just did mental free throws, they improved that 23%. And the last group had 0% increase. What does that tell you? Right? That the mind is just as powerful, in most cases more powerful, than the physical. So what if we combine both? One, many of you, all of you, for the most part, you're here, right? Like Mr. Rozier said, you're in the mecca, right? I didn't graduate from King. I played basketball at Detroit Southwest. I had the privilege of winning the state championship, the number one team in the country at the time. And some of my teammates went on to play professional basketball, they had lasting careers, and then have repurposed it themselves. I suffered an injury. Practice before our city championship. I spent the next two years rehabbing. Right? They didn't have the technology that they have today. And I believe that was the defining moment that propelled me into working with athletes today. And I'm going to tell each one of you it does not matter, it does not matter how good you are. If you play a sport long enough, you're going to deal with some some kind of trauma. You might be small, you might be large, but you're going to deal with injury, you're going to deal with letdown, right? But what is going to get you over that hump is this, your mindset. The mental part of the game that's really underestimated, that's not talked about enough, right? So if I can leave you with one thing, I would say this. If I can leave you with one practice, there are many practices, there are many things that you can do to strengthen your mindset, right? And that is, every day, just close your eyes and visualize yourself becoming successful at whatever it is that you're trying to do. If you're trying to increase um, your accuracy with throwing the football as a quarterback, picture that. Picture the amount of completions that you want to make, right? Do we have any basketball players in here? Okay? If you want to become a better forearm handler, Picture yourself handling the ball. Set aside a certain amount of time every day to work on your mindset, okay? You're here in the Mecca, and there is no coincidence that King, year after year after year after year, rises to the top. It's a mindset. When you step foot in here, your mind changes. I don't care if you're a transfer, if you're coming in as a, as a ninth grader. Your mindset changed when you hit this door. When you step in key, your mindset changed because there's a standard here, right? And so you've got to keep that with you everywhere you go. It's not about getting to the gym every day and hitting reps. That's, look, if you don't do that, that's bare minimum. If you don't do that, you don't, you're not here, right? But what's going to separate you going to the next level in developing your mind. I'll leave you with a quote from LeBron James. What he said is, the greats, they develop the body, but the greatest, they develop the mind. Okay? So I'm gonna say it one more time. The greats, they develop their body, but the greatest develop their mind. Okay? So if you do nothing else to change your game, whatever game it is, start to focus on your mind. Get your mind right. A lot of the minds talked about, Ms. Connie talked about walking in here, introducing yourself. That's a mindset. That's a women's mindset. Right? You're fearless on the, on the court. You're fearless on the field. You got to be fearless when you come in front of adults or people that can help you. You never know. You can be the one and say, you know what, he's the difference. He's different than everybody else in here. 
I want him. Oftentimes, it's not the skill that's going to get you a scholarship, right? It's your behavior. Anthony talked about that. Behavior. What is your behavior like? Okay? How do you look when no one is watching? Right? I'll leave you with a statistic. 1.6% of athletes make it to the NFL. 1.6% of athletes make it to the NFL. What's going to set you apart? All right. Thank you. Stand up. Stretch out just a little bit. Stretch out. I know y'all feel bad. I don't want, the reason I say stretch out, I know we had two workouts today, but I don't want you to miss anything. Everybody learned something so far? Yeah. I don't, because the moment you those off, that's going to be the message that you really should have took for tonight. Just so stretch out. Good. All right. All right, man. to work, right? I mean, obviously, the competition is going to increase, right? I mean, go to college, it starts to, it starts to narrow down, right? Going to best, go to college, the best of high school, go to college, right? The best of college, go to, go to the pros, right? But the mindset has to stay the same, right? As I mentioned before, you've got to have a discipline, right? You know, if guys don't get drafted tomorrow, starting tomorrow, they're going to have money, new money. Right? They gotta keep the same discipline that, that they had to get there, right? It's okay to buy, you know, 
one toy, a, co a car, a house, but then you still gotta get back to the work, right? You know, you still gotta play, right? You, you wanna try to get as, as much as you can out of football, right? Because it's a, it's a short window, man. Um, <coughs> so yeah, keep, keep that same mindset, keep the discipline, and that, that's the key to success, to be honest. Yeah, my mindset was always just, just be the best. I always wanted to, every level I was on, I wanted, in high school, I wanted to win the state. In college, I wanted to win a national championship. In pro, I wanted to win a Super Bowl. Um, and that was my mindset every day, every year. And then before long, you started to become a leader. And then people started following you. And then other people had the same mindset that you had. And, uh, and that's how you build, like, great relationships with teammates. That, that last, you know, to the end of time. You know, I can still call some of my teammates and, you know, we want to be great on the field, but I think that drive from us wanting to be great football players, it made us great fathers, it made us great businessmen, it made us great entrepreneurs. So, um, the mind is, is so powerful, man. so powerful, man. So, uh, yeah, I would definitely say just, just wanting to be the best at everything.
you know, you guys got an outstanding blueprint here at King. So follow, follow it, listen to your coaches. You guys will be all right. Be all right. All right? You're in the right place. Go ahead. I mean, Elijah Wilson, what did y'all do to keep our mental health in order, like, when it was things got brung on down? That's a good question. That's a good question. That's a great question. Great question. Discipline. Discipline. Right? That's all I can say is discipline, man. It's, it's one is time management. It's uh, understanding your priorities and uh, setting, setting goals, right? One thing I, tell my, I told my boys, right? So, you know, you got a, a goal, Jaden, a goal to play in the NBA. My youngest son, Jordan, is uh, in Virginia, playing on the number one team in the country, Paul City. I always tell them to write your goals down. You got five goals, right? Write it down. I want to be All-American. I want to go to go to the league. You know, whatever they may be, write them down, right? Manifest it, pray about it, and put it somewhere where you can see it, right? Put it on your on your uh, your room door, so that you see it every time you walk out that door. You know you, what you're going out to do, right? So anything that does not align with what you have on that on that door, don't do it, right? Don't do it. Yeah. And uh, surround yourself with a lot of positive people. Um, when I was coming up, I went to uh, Second Avenue Baptist Church. So I could always talk to a, a deacon. I could always talk to a pastor, a bishop. Uh, I had uncles who used to take me under their wing and, and tell me them things. And you know people that's positive as opposed to the people that's negative. And um, you also know a lot of people who just not going to tell you what you want to hear. They're going to tell you no, but they're going to tell you, like, this isn't the right thing for you to do, whether you want to hear it or not. And, you know, once you see that, you know, you got a lot of people in your corner, you got a strong support system, that, that helps with your mental health. You know, so um, I would say, you know, keep in contact with the people that uplift you as opposed to the people that are trying to bring you down. Education. Well, <laughs> after you've 
done playing football, you know, you gotta you gotta make a living. And sometimes you if you're fortunate enough to even get there, you know, sometimes you might just play one year, sometimes you might play three. Uh, I was blessed enough to play nine. And um, you have to use your education in order to stretch that money. You know, like if you get a million dollars. Um, and you 22 years old, like you gotta make that stretch to you 60, 70. So you gotta have a plan. What is your plan? Maybe you gotta think with the end as, in, in mind. You know, what I'm gonna do when I turn 55? What I'm gonna do with my 401k? All of these things, and um, there's a lot of information out there. You just gotta seek it. You gotta go get it. You gotta read. They gonna give you a contract. And it, it, it may be, from a shoe deal, it may be your salary for football or basketball, whatever sports y'all want to play, you got to read it. You got to sit down and read it. It's important because at some point in time, your body ain't going to be the same. My knees is not the same. It's Achilles is not the same. You're going to have to have something to fall back on. So it is extremely important because if you think about, if you think about your life, right, um, I'll be 44. I've only played professional football for nine out of 44 years. It's just a small chunk of your life. But then you gotta live the rest of your life trying to figure these things out. How do you do that? Education, you gotta educate yourself. You can't take somebody else's word for it. Like you find out for yourself. Spice, talk about the money. Like one thing, when Vontae came up here a couple years ago, a couple of kids couldn't believe that some of the people he had to say no to. <laughs> and how those relationships can kind of yeah. turn a little sour because of things that people ask for when, when you start getting money like that. Mm -hmm. Talk about that from that perspective with, with the kids. Uh, sometimes you just have to, uh, you got you to do the hard thing and say no, uh, first of all. But, Sometimes you just have to let people name their price. Mm -hmm. you know, people be like, every time you talk to somebody, hey man, I need a thousand dollars. I need two thousand dollars. I need this, I need that. Man, I got four kids. Tuition, tuition is not going down. I gotta give my kids to and through school. Like people just look at the bottom line and say, oh man, you signed a ten million dollar contract. I know you got it, but they're not taking it to account that taxes is going to hit that 10. They're not taking into account that I automatically got six miles to feed immediately. Me, my wife, and my four kids. I, they, we got to have a house. They got to have food. They got to, they got, I got to pay for their school. You know, so people don't look at that. And uh, a lot of times you just, you got to say no. Like, no, I can't do it. What I can do, I can I can give you $100 in there, $200 or whatever to help you out, but I can't do this all the time. I just can't, because I got my own family that I got to take care of. And you got to, like they say, what is it, stand on business? You got to stand on business. Be like, no, oh, man, and, and if this is going to affect our friendship, then maybe you want this friend to begin with. Jalen got way more money than I did. <laughs> That's the one that's not my money. Not my money. But along with that, though, with that, but back to back to uh, we were telling you ed education, right? The ability to stretch that money, right? Mm -hmm. And telling people no, um, you know, you can't just fr frivolously spend money. And give people give it away because it's not gonna last long, right? You gotta understand your priority. Um, again, have discipline, right? Understand you got a family. Start saving money and doing the right thing with it.
my situation, it happened, it happened sooner than I wanted to, right? I, I wanted to have a 10-year career, tore my Achilles, missed the se entire season, and then managed to come back for one year, and like I said, I wasn't the same. So it happened sooner than I wanted to, and so I had to, I had to fall back on my education. I, I mean, you got to do that anyway, but it happened sooner than, than I wanted to. So, like I said, get your, get your degree, learn it, and then figure out what you want to do, right? Figure out what you want to do, what you have a passion for, what you like doing. You know, you got to really sit down and think about that, right? You know, you, you got football, but what, what else do you like? What else are you into? What else you can see yourself doing? You know, when you retire, right? That's the that's the most important thing, right? Because you can jump into a job that you don't want to do, and you can be miserable, and and uh, you know that's gonna be hard to do. But you know, you have an opportunity to use football to progress in your life and do the things that you actually want to do. The uh, the transition was was tougher than I expected. Um, you know, you don't have to you don't have to be at the facility for 8 a.m. meetings. You know, you don't have to be there for uh, 7 a.m. workouts. And so you don't have a set schedule. And you're not running out of the tunnel to 100,000 fans screaming your name. And it's, it's tough to go from that transition of uh, just getting your mind right and staying focused to not having anything at all. It's, it's a beast. And like you was talking about that mental health aspect of it, you got to be strong mentally to try to find something else that can kind of give you that same feeling. Sure. And I get that living vicariously through my son. He's playing football in high school. And now I get that with social media. So, Cause football and sports is a form of entertainment. And you know, I like to entertain. So uh, me transitioning from football to know, shooting videos to doing commercials and stuff like that on social media, I kind of found something that, that, that I'm passionate about. Just as, just as passionate as I was for football, I'm passionate about entertainment. I'm going to do a comedy set at 930 on Woodward right now. And, um, and I'm in my element because I get a chance to entertain people. I get a chance to have people around me laugh and joke and dance and just have a good time. So, um, but it is a beast uh, because it's, I, I played football for 18 years of my life. And then you got to give it up, especially when you don't want to. Like they release you and you still feel like, man, I at least got four more years left. And it, it's a tough pill to swallow because it's, it's a revolving door. Like you leaving and somebody else coming in. Right. But you know, it's just a, uh, it's the nature of the beast. At some point you got to give it up and you got you to gotta have a plan.
Football Players Mothers Association to come here. This is our first time doing something like this. I hope and pray that we can do it again at other schools, but keep this first. very instrumental in helping me get this together. I want to thank her daughter, Dawn, who's not here right now. And I also want to thank the mom for coming out with me this evening.